Bank Kuljetes. Shkall ko aplikacionin e Bankës Pro Kredit dhe paguaj profi në përmjet telefonit mobil Android. Pro Kredit Bank. Shumë profi. Welcome back at ProCredit Bank's main stage here at Kosovo ICT's 9th edition. We'll continue with another discussion panel uh, about changing the education, education system that will be moderated by Mr. Ermal Sadiko, the CEO of Link Plus IT. Mr. Sadiko, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here once more, uh, Kosovo ICT 2020. Uh, I'm Ermal, as I was introduced and I represent a software company, uh, Link Plus IT. Uh, so it's a subject which is very interesting to talk about, and to, to me personally, one of the most interesting, because uh, e-learning has changed a lot. I mean, learning in general has changed a lot during the last years, and especially it was accelerated with the pandemic situation. And I, I have uh, three, three very important people in, in Kosovo that are uh, working towards changing this and to make it better, this system, and to make it better, and I'm, I'm very honored to have them here. So I will uh, immediately switch to, to, to them and to, to have their opinion. Maybe, Darce, I think you were first on the list, and you're online, and I would go with you. So um, th there is a specific question I want to ask. You're, you're working a lot with young people, and uh, you, you trained so many young people during the last three, four, five years, and correct me if I'm wrong. So can you share some Almost experience? Six. Almost six. Oh, amazing. Can you share me some quick experience of how, how hard is it to to change their perspective on digitalization and, and learning in general? I think, I think this is the easiest part, to be honest. Um, we don't have to change any perspective with these kids. They already are in the perspective. It's us, the adults, that have to change. And um, for, for that, that part has made our, our, life, our life quite easy. Um, uh, what was a bit hard um, was to change um, from a brick and mortar style, basically working in a, inside a classroom and shifting everything online in, in a span of two weeks. Um, that, was, um, that was the main digitalization part that um, uh, uh, not just us as digital school um, that had to do it here in Pristina locally. But um, don't, don't forget, uh, we're, we're running a big franchise network um, throughout the world. We're basically um, um, in many states of Earth right now. And um, all the schools, they had um, to, to swap this. And um, that was, that was uh, the, 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 the difficult part of um, having this education 2.0, since the, since the subject is like that. And I think um, COVID is a spot on um, uh, as, as a demo for the whole world to see how education 2.0 will work. So I think I think that's that's the main focus um, uh, where where we should be um, uh, discussing nowadays and having the whole um, discourse set um, in in terms of um, we tried online um, we've seen uh, in a worst case scenario with getting online with all the kids on earth and completely unprepared what goes wrong and what goes right so now let's try to tune up that process and let's not just beg for the old days because the old days are gone we need to focus on how we're gonna um, uh, use the, the knowledge that we've gained till now and um, push this education 2.0 as much as possible thank you thank you so much i say um, i would go over to 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 arta who is a an innovator and it, one of the first, if not the first person, not just in Kosovo, but in the region that, that actually saw or introduced programming to children. Uh, what, what made you do this? Was it your own kids? Was it your uh, experience? Was it something that, what motivated you to, to, to start this with J-Coders? And maybe you can, you can combine Labbox into there, but I mean, the main thing that I would like to, to hear from you is how, how did this all start from your perspective? Um, thank you, Edmar. It's, it's a pleasure, first of all, to be here. Um, I'm a mother of three kids, <laughs> and of course, the main motivation, and by background, I'm a computer engineer. So, um, considering that we are living in this computer age and how technology is shaping the world, um, I find it extremely important that kids today understand that technology is not a tool that we use only, but it's also a tool that we can create with. And um, having uh, that perspective and my own professional background, I 
decided to try out a couple of activities with my oldest daughter. Uh, after seeing how excited she got quickly, um, the next conversation I had was with my sister, which now is the co-founder of both companies, where we were discussing like, okay, I'm a parent, I would pay for this. And that's how jQuarters came to be. Uh, after we've kind of taken this experience and then uh, um, seen what, what's happening in the world, we, we also quickly saw that uh, the topic of bringing STEM education. Now, when I say STEM education, it's, it's a bit of a broad, uh, broad curricula that is being addressed all, all over the world that covers not only technology and programming, but also science, engineering, and a bit of more applied mathematics that is needed in order for kids to really understand how the world works. Um, having said that, we then uh, started thinking about how what are these kids experiencing? What are they experiencing at home with technology? And what can we do to, uh, to change that experience by providing something else? Um, so if you look at the both, both companies, jCoders and Labbox, in, in terms of a mission, they are the same. They both try to uh, provide new experiences for kids while they do it differently. With jCoders, we are holding classes where we have a curricula uh, that covers topics from programming languages to electronics uh, to a bit of more, let's say, a broader um, applicative experiments that they can do. And uh, Labbox tackled the problem from a, from a dip, different perspective where we, we saw the tools that were available, especially on the hardware side. And we uh, quickly found out that the philosophy uh, behind how these tools were created was more to kind of cash in on an instant gratification that kids were um, yearning for. Um, and we sw sw switched that to actually pro providing tools where they can still quickly, but uh, actually learn how uh, hardware works and in order to kind of bring them into a bit more practical experience from that, uh, from that end. Um, kids need experiences. This is at the core of education. Uh, and the best way to learn is through experiences. And it's our job to think about those, whether it is on an online environment or in a classroom environment. These environments and, and how they perceive these experiences is what makes the difference. And um, my work in the last, let's say, uh, five and more years in, in education, I've seen that details make a huge difference. And uh, we need to be smart about that. Thank you. Thank you, Arta. Um, I'll go back to, to Professor Rezai. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, I have a question which, to me personally, is the most important question, not just for you, but for whole education system all over the world. And I'm tr I will try to wrap it up in a way that right now kids have a machine in their in their pocket which which gives them access to to the information of every kind so they have a window to 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 the world how is the education sector in kosovo approaching this this i can call it a problem it's not a problem actually it's opportunity but how are they approaching how are they keeping or how do you plan to keep the keep the kids interested in in the classical if i can call it classical learning system when they have something so much more powerful inside their pockets every day of their life? Well, <clears throat> this is a trillion dollar question. Um, and it's, uh, it would need, it's the miracle of organizing education now in the new situation, in the new uh, circumstances of the pan pandemic. Uh, in the ministry, since I, and thank you for having me in this uh, short program. Uh, in the ministry, we found ourselves in a situation as, uh, student of violin, uh, attending his first lesson in violin and performing in front of an audience. And I'm sorry to, to disappoint you, but you were our instructor. Because in the ministry, we went for people who were more attuned than the ministry, people and organizations such as yours, Link Plus, Girafa, and uh, uh, EduNet, SchoolMe, Microsoft, and others who could advise us and help us to overcome this kind of new phenomenon of the pandemic and the need to switch from physical presence uh, and instruction in schools to um, online and distance learning. Um, it was not easy at all, and we were learning and doing at the same time. 
and uh, the problems, the issues that were key because uh, it had, it was not only methodology of learning online, it was about the mere concept, the very concept of learning in, in the new situation in online uh, teaching and learning environment. Uh, the roles changed completely. Uh, so in a way, there was a democratization of the process, of the teaching and learning process, of the process of instruction. Why? Parents uh, got more important in this process. Parents, uh, especially during the first phase, uh, March till June, parents played a key role. If we succeeded then, it was thanks to parents and students, not because of the schools. And, and uh, um, another, another uh, factor was also the municipal education direct directorates. They also played a very important role, even though I'm sure that they found themselves in a similar situation as we did. There was a key switch in the learning environment, and I think that uh, Darcy uh, mentioned it briefly, and it was like, you know, before we used to, the teachers, or we, adult people, we used to uh, read our news on a mobile uh, phone, mobile application, and we were telling students, our children, uh, uh, to go and read a book. Often these books were the same as those that I, I learned from, especially if you think of Lectura Scholore, school uh, textbooks, uh, the same books as I was reading when I was a student, primary school student. So it was a kind of uh, awkward, learning environment. Why? Students are these digital natives and we are digital immigrants and we were telling them go and learn from books and we were using uh, new applications to inform ourselves and to keep updated with what's happening in the world. But then with the pandemic everything changed. Students were now the digital natives, they were in their own territory, they felt good uh, in that better, sorry, than us in that situation. And teachers, we had to start learning fast from people like you in order to get attuned to the new learning environment. How much we succeeded in that, uh, it's a question. There has been some research. I think it was partially successful because people, uh, children, uh, more or less learned. Uh, families were kept together in isolation and they had something structured, activities to do at home, which I think was one of the key contributions at that time. And now, um, uh, the principle, ministry principle currently is, we will study to the, to the extent possible, uh, uh, attend instruction in schools, but we have to be ready and we have to provide also for online and distance education. And this is what we are trying to keep going on. Uh, how we are doing, I think we are not doing as good as we should have, but uh, still we are providing the key services. And again, I have to thank teachers and teaching staff. Practically, they are working double shifts. And I have never so far heard one teacher complaining that they are working longer hours. And this is really to be admired. And, and uh, I think that that part is working better. Uh, regarding uh, uh, distance learning, I think that that is ongoing too. Since two or three weeks, it has been consolidated, but we can do much better in that regard. I think that I will stop here and then we'll wait for other questions and as we go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Darcy, you're still with us? Of course. Hey, I have a specific question for you because I think you can answer it uh, correctly uh, and interestingly. So quite a lot of kids went through your, your, your school. Can, can you show me approximate number? Can you tell us? Um, only in, uh, locally in Pristina, we have currently over a thousand kids active. Um, but, but if you would look um, on a global scale and cumulatively what uh, we've done so far, there should be over 10,000 kids at least um, that um, are either active or they used to be with us. Yeah, so that's amazing. Can, can you tell me out of those 10,000 people, time by time, there come some of them, the kids that are extremely uh, talented, let's say to a degree of... of, uh, of uh, extreme intelligence how do you deal with those kids how do you what, by all means what do, we you, hire what them. do you do <laughs> yeah I, I was expecting that answer but can you show me the process 
Yes, of course. Um, I, can, I can show you our latest process that we've had um, the experience with one of our talents. Um, uh, so uh, uh, every time we're seeking like for super talents, I'm um, considering that we have another company um, uh, in tandem to digital school called Star Labs. And um, over there, we're also growing um, uh, on the global scene with different kind of um, big clients. And uh, we're constantly hiring developers. And um, for this reason, what we've seen um, is that um, we can we can basically um, grow our own talents. Um, um, today we have an 18-year-old um, who is just as talented as a 25 or 26-year-old um, uh, student who finished the studies and has like a year of experience. Um, he's basically on the same level. He's 18 years old. Today he is um, handling our client alone uh, without any problem. So basically. He does all the daily stand-ups. It's an international client, of course, and the project is quite big. And um, our client, they, they still cannot believe that um, um, he's just 18 years old and he is um, so skilled. And uh, not to forget, um, he was um, almost five years with digital school. So um, we nurtured him. And he's not the only case. Um, today, what we're doing, um, all, uh, we, we're offering um, uh, um, uh, internship to large numbers since we're online. So what we've done as Star Labs, um, we've increased our uh, capacities for internships. So we're, we're hiring, it's not hiring, it's basically just an internship of two to three months. And we're getting 40 to 50 people um, every session. And on that 40 to 50 people, we usually um, uh, pre-select um, up to 10 kids from digital school um, so that we give them a taste of experience of real life world as well. So. Basically, in this way, we're trying to inject um, a large number of developers into the market so that um, in the next two to three years, we're going to be seeing, um, and you're going to be seeing, since you have your own company, more and more applicants coming in from digital school. And that really makes us very, very proud. Thank you. I'm, I'm waiting for them. And uh, it's, a, it's, a great, uh, it's a great contribution that you're doing to the, to the community. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. I, I'm going in cycles just... <laughs> But those are the things that are popping up in my in my mind. So I will connect this question to the one that I, I had with the professor before and maybe uh, give us your perspective from J-coders. Uh, kids are, it's very hard to, to tell parents now that they need to come to you so you can put this human touch on top of their education because they have so much there to do on, on, on internet. They have so many online courses, so many... Still, parents do it, but how do you keep up with them? How do you keep up with Udemy and, and Coursera and Khan Academy? And what else? There's so much of these things going online, but uh, how do you go to parents and tell them there needs to be somebody there to, 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 to guide these people? And what do J coders do with this? How do they work? How do you work besides giving the, the courses and the stuff like that? What else do you give to kids that you, you would say it is important for parents to bring kids to you? and, and to, 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 to guide them through their career? Um, at the core of what we try to do is uh, we try to uh, put kids in an environment where they basically start developing skills. Um, with the engineering um, taste that uh, building programs or building any kind of project using technology has, uh, kids uh, oftentimes end up uh, developing skills like critical thinking, problem solving, um, creativity. And um, so that's, that's, that's where, where we try to focus. We understand that because of their age group that we, uh, we work now, it's a bit hard to, uh, let's say, predefine uh, where they're going to end up in terms of uh, really uh, defining their careers, but we, our job is to broaden their experience in the sense that they understand that they can be skilled in these uh, professions and then leave it up to them to decide where they want to go. Uh, compared to what the online is offering, um, I think there are two basic values that come from, uh, from bringing kids into an academy like J Coders where they um, and not only get accountability from the structures within our curriculum, uh, which is not uh, when you do something online in terms of like self-paced, because then the accountability is a bit lost. There is no, nobody there to ask you, did, you, did you learn that? Or how are you doing 
about solving this particular uh, exercise and things like that. And the second thing is that sense of community. So uh, kids uh, end up creating friendships that last. We've seen them, for example, from J coders, we have uh, students who have kind of in, within their group created friendships and then applied to some kind of uh, summer program and then went there together. And you, you see these friendships being, being built, which is again uh, a high value where um, that cannot be replaced by only kind of giving them the knowledge. So it's not the content itself, but it's the experience. That's, that's something that we've observed. Um, when it comes also to parents, it, I think this is again a trust thing. Uh, they want to be able to send their kids somewhere that they uh, know that they're getting value out of. And um, the trust factor is higher when they know that there's somebody locally that they can approach, that there's that, that availability. And this allowed uh, and allows decoders to continuously grow and have impact within the, um, within the, its, its operating uh, zone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very nice answer. Uh, again, I'll continue in, in, in circle with Professor Ejai. So uh, this is a question which might not uh, be very uh, personal to you, but more to the institution that you represent. Uh, it's funny enough, my, my, my daughter is, is in the same school that I used to study uh, 30 years ago in uh, elementary school, Dardania which is a public school. And when I go to pick her up, I see that uh, nothing has changed in the 30 years. They still use the chalk, the chalk and the boards and stuff. And, and a lot of the things that they do are approximately the same. And uh, education should evolve in a way, not too much, but there should be some kind of... And I know this is a financial answer behind this, and I know there is a political answer behind it, but can you give us some, some hope of how are we approaching this for the future, because uh, things have moved so fast with the industrial revolution, now the digital revolution. Uh, how do we expect our kids to come up with, with, uh, with new ideas, entrepreneurship, way of thinking, and, and stuff like that? Uh, I had a similar experience some five years ago when I went to visit my school, where I, so it's not, it's worse than you, you were saying in some cases. So the school where I attended my primary school did not look much more different. Only I was grown up, uh, bigger than I was at that time somehow. And, uh, but schools are very conservative kind of uh, milieus. Uh, schools don't like to change state curricula. They don't like to change so much. So um, technology is changing much faster than the humans, than the people are changing. And I think as a person in uh, the world of technology, you probably see this paradoxical situation much clearer than the rest of us do who are uh, emerged, immersed in this other reality of schooling. Uh, schools in Kosovo are lagging behind in every respect, and we know this. And uh, we should not hide this or try to hide this. Um, we have the results of international tests. We have TIMS recently to uh, test in mathematics and sciences. And so th we have a problem in Kosovo education. Not only as, uh, for instance, some 30 years ago or 40 years ago, schools were the most advanced, technologically advanced institutions in the community. Now they are the most backward. And uh, I think that the reason for that is that, you know, they did a research with our teachers in, who took part in TIMS test, international test in mathematics and science, I think, and our teachers were 97% happy with their work. So this complacency in the system is, I think, one of the key issues that we need to start working with in order to find out that the, that the situation is not good enough. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, the situation is not that bad because our two schools are not the only schools in Kosovo. And you, if you visit more schools, you will see that there are very, very good schools and very much advanced schools. And if, uh, if you asked me, I think that the, the answer is in the school principal. If you look at the school princi principal, you have seen the school. If you look at the school, you have seen the school principal. 
So we all are in a trying period when we have to do something about this situation or, or else uh, I think that the schools will become obsolete and they will go for other uh, options such as Darcy's and Arta's because parents want their children to be attuned to the new times. So uh, this is high time. And for this purpose, this year we have started working on the digitalization of education strategy that we want to have the school updated and uh, more in, in, uh, uh, in line with the new developments in technology. And we have collected some very good number of very good ex experts and we expect to have it finished by the end of this year. Secondly, we are working to change um, let me give you an example. Our schools today offer only teaching, not teaching and learning, only teaching. Exactly. Uh, whereas uh, we know that schools should pr provide a lot more. They would provide social serv services, psychological services. They should provide care. They should provide uh, different club activities. They should provide more, more, several times more than we are providing now. And we are going into a process where we want to change the school mission. We want to look into and change the school mission. I think that one of my analyses have told me that the key problem is, apart from the complacency that we have really unbased, ungrounded complacency, uh, the second thing is that schools have reduced their all activities into teaching. We want to change that. I think that these would help would help. I'm not saying that they will solve the problem. I'm uh, surprised when I see some very good schools. If you go to s about at least 10 schools in Pristina, they are, they are probably just as good as any school in Europe. And I'm very happy and also surprised to see that this is happening. And I appreciate that. And I think that we should build clusters of schools around these model schools. I will call them model schools. And maybe that's another way of us improving something in the situation. Uh, the situation in our school is a long story. You don't want to hear all of it, I suppose. I probably, I probably do, but in another conversation, which True. will last for it hours, because I, I would really like to talk more about that. Uh, did I say? You there? I'm here. Uh, okay, uh, I think this is the last question for you, and then we'll, we'll end it with, with uh, our time, Professor Rejai. Uh, the, the bad thing about, if I can call it bad, about... Uh, teaching somebody our industry in, into our industry, it's, it's so fast, it's so dynamic. Things change too much. So things that we learn in history, they stay for years. I mean, history is history, they stay forever. I mean, and biology and geography and stuff. And I remember in my high school, I used to study Visual Basic and then University Borland Pascal. They are never used anymore. How do you deal with these things with your young and not so young uh, students? Uh, how do you teach them something when you know personally that in the next 10 years or maybe 15 years that technology will be obsolete uh, in the end? Uh, how do you approach this problem? I think, I think, I think you made a really, really good question and, um, um, and this should reflect also to our education system as well um, because it's one of the key problems about um, how fast do you upgrade and um, the current bureaucracy and procedures and uh, it make, makes things everything very slow. Well, us, we're, we're a private-owned company, and um, we can be very agile and very fast. And um, for this, th let's not forget that um, um, we have obligations to our international community as well, um, uh, th that basically we have schools today in Mexico, in U.S., in Hong Kong, in Germany, and um, they, expect, they expect us to be um, on par with the technology today. So we have a whole team. Um, we call them a curricula development team. And um, they're constantly upgrading, making changes, and researching um, over what the newest trend is. But then you might want to ask me, it's like, okay, um, the kid that's going to join in the next five years, he will have something new, but the ones that learn today something, um, uh, um, it will be old for them. And how, how they will cope with this? Well, um, for everyone who joins technology, um, they, they do know, they do know that um, it changes a lot. But what doesn't change are the basic principles and the concepts of it. So, um, the more they use these principles and these concepts, um, then the language of programming or, or, or another new technology being presented into it um, is just another, another small mountain to climb for them because they've already climbed the big one. So to them, it will be just uh, training, nothing more, um, a training exercise. And um, 
the idea is um, to, to learn how to think like a machine does. And um, that's not a big of a problem once you learn it. And once you understand, then you see that um, programming is just another language. It's basically like um, any other language that has grammar, it has structure, and that's about it. And basically, this is the one of the main reasons why our biggest partner that we have, Burlesque, through which we're expanding globally, um, um, they chose us because they're a language course and they understood that programming at the end of the day is just another language, but it is just not a human language. <laughs> To be to be to be honest in this aspect, but um, I, I want also I want also to give my final remarks um, in terms of um, um, uh, how how we're going to proceed not us as a country but us as a world um, how we should proceed to to the new form of education because the problems that were stated for our country um, trust me um, we're we're hearing a lot of things from all over the world it's not that the rest of the world is on a much much better shape they're not just as bad as we are, but they're not good either, and they need to evolve as well. The whole schooling system needs to change. So, so for that reason, um, for the first time, uh, we have the chance as a nation, and not just us, but everyone, is um, just like to make that leap of faith and evolve. So my, my remarks would be um, what, we, what we need to do right now is, um, I, I know a lot of, ha of this has been done before, but um, I, I think they just need to make a hard stance on it and enforce it. Um, we need to digitalize the management part of the school. Less bureaucracy, more chat groups, and open discussions. People need to discuss with each other, not just wait for answers or send just emails. And um, we need to digitalize the materials for kids. I mean, like kids nowadays, they'd rather read from a laptop than a book nowadays. Um, and, and to them, it will be more fun. And of course, of course, a learning management system. So we've had all of this done already um, before the pandemics. And when the pandemics hit, we were online in less than a week. And if we did not have the system, we would have not been in a better shape than the public sector was. And of course, once you do this, yeah, then you force everyone as though another pandemic has hit us. Because we've seen that once you enforce it for real and you don't leave a chance to people, um, they will do it. And we need to stop wasting time with research. We did that for the last 20 years. There's so many solutions out there and we don't need to be creative anymore. Just grab something that works for everyone and get over with it, try it and accept that you won't be perfect. And we need to stop making kids um, learn things by heart. Uh, we need, they have all the information on earth right now inside on, on, a, on a single cell phone. So uh, wh why are we making them um, learn things by heart any longer? I, I mean, and they hate it, to be honest. We need, we need to, to, to change things and see how we can make kids fall in, back in love with the schools. They need to love school. They love digital school. Why they can't love physics? Physics is amazing. But instead, everyone hates it for one reason or the other. So we, we, need, we need to find that love for them again. And my last remark, um, we've seen how online is working. And I think education should not be limited only physically. Um, if my child is sick and he cannot come today to the school, I would like that he can attend the same class um, live. Why not have a hybrid system and have a recorded session and as well a, a, a community for him online where, where he can find answers to, to, to questions that he has so that um, parents are, are not tortured with those things. I yeah. think that that's my five cents. Or two cents. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You 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 reminded me of, of my my years in university here, and, and we called it Electro, which was the University of Engineering, Electrical Engineering. One of my uh, questions in the exam was to to draw uh, a curve in the graph, which represents the the, the dependency on uh, of electricity and and temperature of one of the elements. Let's say selenium or something. So I had to draw that curve. I had to memorize it by hand, by, uh, by, How by heart. How much did it serve it to you to become an nothing, entrepreneur today? <laughs> nothing in my life because it's a, it's a curve which you can find it all over. I mean, you just go to Google and you say, how does electricity uh, uh, depend on, on temperature in this element? And it's just a curve. And, the, and you, you don't have, even need to write it. You're just going to say, um, uh, hey, Google, and yeah, ask yeah. a question. Yeah, just tell me what is the yeah yeah on this temperature. Show me this, and Google will send you. So this exactly. this memory is I totally agree because you just reminded me of that specific question I had more than 15 years ago, or maybe 20 yeah 20 years ago, and it was such and I didn't know how to draw it because I, I thought how, why should I remember 100 and so elements of of stuff like that. But um, I, I think it's it's now it's evolving and we are not going to see those kind of questions in the in the next generation probably never anymore.
I hope uh, but so. It's, but, I it's good hope that, so. but it's good that you brought it up. Uh, I, I want to know something from, from Arta. So Arta, is the, the, you're the creator of, for me, one of the best uh, products that came out of Kosovo. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm not saying that now, but most of the people think like that. Labbox. And it is not directly a learning product, but indirectly it is a learning product, and it helps a lot in, in education. Um, have you tried, besides telling us a little bit more about that, have you tried introducing that to the public school systems and talking to the institutions? If yes, how did it go? If no, why? Because it's a very cute product which every parent should buy for their kids. Uh, so I really want to know that because it's, it, it serves this subject that we are speaking right now. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Armand, first of all, for uh, showing so much appreciation for what we've done. It's, um, it has been a huge risk in terms of, if you think about how much effort and investment it took to actually get where we are. Um, and um, also being exposed to, um, let's say, um, a completely different type of comp competition with Labbox is really a, a challenge in itself uh, f for us. However, we really believe in the value that it provides in the sense that it is, um, from what we know from the research done, it's the only tool that is built uh, with principles of um, uh, allowing kids to learn. Uh, what we've seen is, or what we uh, constantly see is that there are also different products that do, uh, do provide experiences. However, the way that kids work with them, it's that they are so plug and play-ish in the sense that kids really are not challenged enough. And this is the huge difference between a lab box as a product and, um, and the others. Um, when it comes to, and I agree that as a product itself, without a structure and a curriculum, it can or cannot um, give the value. However, it does have, have the potential uh, after we've, and the way that we've structured by combining that with a gamified uh, learning platform where our subscribers then uh, unlock the curriculum. When it comes to actually providing uh, or trying to have conversation with the public school system, um, in that regard, it's a matter of a company strategy. And because we have just, uh, figured out the business model by which we want to operate, our first uh, most important goal is to be able to uh, attract as much customers in the, in the area that we want before we, we enter any kind of a bigger discussion. It's a matter of uh, what's the quickest, uh, most um, uh, effective way to grow. And having a conversation with, with an organization that is known to be slow didn't feel like a right strategy. However, I do hope that we will be able to have these conversations in the future when the schools are more ready to bring in such, uh, such a thing. It's a process. It needs to be taken very seriously. There needs to be uh, extensive training of teachers and um, in order to be, to be done well. And as, as, a, as a company, we really believe that um, We'd rather not do things than not do than not than not do them good. So uh, it's it's a it's a conversation that we plan to have hopefully in the future. Um, when it comes to the uh, to the school system, I'll just extend um, maybe a suggestion that I've seen work very well and it's highly recommended, especially as a shift, because there is a, a huge challenge of of. As the professor said, uh, are the kids today are digital natives while the teachers are digital immigrants, and that was really beautifully said. Um, I think there is a smart way to bring that into advantage, especially in the school system, and there is a very simple methodology I would recommend for you to take a look at and then decide if it's worthy of pursuing. It's called self-organized learning environments. The way that um, those environments are organized is that you basically ask the kids to do the research. It has shown tremendous results, and it kind of shifted the, the classroom atmosphere from um, taking the burden of the role of the, from the teacher to, uh, to provide all the information, which today teachers don't have anymore the cap capability to do. 
because of uh, what Barce and you mentioned in regards of, of how the access to information is, is happening. So uh, if, if, if a methodology like that, and it's very simple, I mean, it doesn't even take uh, more than a day to really look at it and try to experiment with it, but it really is really, really effective. Uh, the only thing is that kids will need to have access to a device. Um, if maybe allowing kids to bring phones or their own tablets, that might be solved, or hopefully uh, the ministry will take it more seriously that schools really need to have access to technology in order to um, ac accelerate the quality of, of the learning. Um, that's basically all from, <laughs> from my side. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, no, that, I'm kind of connected because I really, I was um, having this in mind. We tried it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, I can send resources if, if you want to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, that, that's more than enough. Uh, while, while listening to, to Arta, I noticed something about myself, which is not <laughs> fair in a way. So I was, I'm glorifying a lot the, pop, the private sectors because I really like these two companies and the rest of the companies that are teaching kids. And I'm complaining to you, which is not fair. <laughs> I know. Well, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so it, it's not my intention to, to, to complain towards you. I'm just trying to, to find a way of how to, to look forward. Uh, I've noticed while I was doing a lot of courses myself in, the, in these private industry courses, let's say Cisco, Microsoft, HP, uh, that I did in the past, one of the things that I really liked when I did those courses was the, the, the testing system that they had. Because it, not, that, not that it was just digital, but it was very fair in a way. And you had points, you had a system, it was quite professionally put there. You, know, you couldn't complain at the end. If you failed, you failed and you went home. And, you, and if you passed, you passed. And I also have some questions from people listening to us. And, and two people have already mentioned this. We don't have a very good testing system in Kosovo. And I'm thinking from first grade, elementary school, and also uh, higher uh, level academics. Mm. What is being done? And what, what I would really like to, because there's nobody that can answer this mm -hmm. better than you, I think. Well, the te student assessment system in Kosovo is not bad. It's catastrophic. <laughs> it's a system whereby both teachers and students are running throughout the year to f fulfill the requirements of the inspectorate and of the curriculum. It's a running system, it's not an assessment system. And I have recently set up a group, established a group, working group, to work on the internal school assessment system. And then we also need to address the external standardized system for assessment. It's necessary, I couldn't agree more, we are working on it, but we have just started, which mm -hmm. means it will take some time, but not too much. It is a system that has to be addressed. Let me give you a story about Please. where we are going now, apart from student assessment. Please. We are working on that. I was uh, to present to all teachers in one of our municipalities. There were about three or 400 teachers in a big hall. And I was to present to them about education system. I said, I want, I'm not going to present to you. I just please give me the th three toughest questions you people have for your students during the pre-university education, 12, 13 years. They gave me three questions. I will never forget them. How to apply mortar in vocational education, how to uh, paint wall, but with mortar, not paint and uh, about integrals and about interference of light in physics. These three questions, I told them I'm a teacher of English, don't ask me English questions about English. And I went to internet, Google, I Googled them, and in less than three minutes, I now answered all three questions. And then said, I said, instead of me presenting to you, please tell me what is your mission. And then we started dotting those on, on a board. Everything has changed, we have to change, and we have to, uh, keep up. There is a concept, and I will finish with this, there is a concept of school knowledge and practical knowledge. Uh, to a, ele to a, an 11 girl or boy, year old boy or girl, it is much more important at any particular moment or at, an, at one day their haircut and jeans than the, the entire curriculum for that day. 
It's much more important how they are going to address or talk to their girlfriend or boyfriend or a friend in, in school. And very important, how they are going to relate to the teachers. Teachers are very important people in students' life. How they are going to relate to the bullies on the way to school and so on. So there is a huge discrepancy in Kosovo between the state curriculum and the practical curricul curriculum that is needed uh, in schools. And for this re in this regard, instead of us telling children, you should know and learn these things, I think that we should work with them in order to see what they need in life. And I th think that this is the kind of rotation that our schooling system needs to do now. Thank you. I, you really brought me some, some very interesting things that we can continue talking, like how to make, if I can call like that, how to make education sexy again. In a way, Attractive. definitely. But definitely. Uh, that requires quite a long talk, and I hope we can continue next time. Uh, relevant so. before attractive. Relevant. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But I give it a spin. So <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Arta. Darce, you have something to say? You always have something to say. Yeah, I always have something to say, but I'm, I'm going to keep this as a surprise for the next time. <laughs> Thank you so much. I want to be a bit more mystical. <laughs> it would have been much better to I'm have serious. you here, but wish you all the best know, health. And uh, thank, you so thank, you Arta, thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Arta, thank you so much for being here. It was my here. pleasure. And uh, it's such a nice time to be in Kosai City. Bye-bye.